Hi, uh, going to be talking you through making up a, a presentation board, an A2 presentation board that's going to be borderless. So this could be mounted or just pinned up as it is. Um, so what we're seeing here is the final, the final product. Uh, this was all generated in Adobe InDesign and then exported as a PDF. Okay, so the white area here is an A1 piece of paper and then inside that we've set up the size of an A2 and using that for our presentation purposes. So if I zoom in a bit closer, okay, we can see here that the edge of the image is running down to what we call crop marks. Uh, so we've got a set of crop marks in each of the four corners of the A2 and we use these for lining up ruler and then cutting with a scalpel or a craft knife. Okay, so what I'll do is talk you through how you set up this, you know, in a kind of a, an organized way that you get control. So we'll just have a look at Photoshop first and I'll just talk you through the, the kind of the basics of the page setup. Okay, I'll drop back one step. So what we've got here is white area representing the A1 piece of paper and then using so here's our A1 all the way around and then using the guidelines in InDesign we set up inside that an A2 piece of paper and the position inside here doesn't really matter okay as long as it's inside the A1 it'll be okay okay so here's my A2 picked up and first thing you do is mark where the corners of the A2 will be. Okay, so these black lines don't run all the way along, they just go from corner outwards. So I'll zoom in a bit closer on one so you can see. Okay, so they just come from the corner so I know where to place my ruler. Okay, and then we get busy and build up the presentation just as you would normally. Okay, so identify where these crop marks are, we've got four crop marks you can't just get away with two corners you need four sets for this to work properly okay and then building up the presentation inside our A2 so I'll just get rid of a bit of this color so we can see what's going on okay and what I started off with was a very large background image and made it a bit weaker so that my text was able to to be stronger and visible and looking at this image you know I thought well there's there's some something here that I can maybe use to help me control the 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 presentation so I've got a quite a strong vertical line here on the edge of the the Farnsworth house picked up on one of these verticals here and also this window divider there so I've got a couple of panels that are basically the same size and one here that's filling up the rest. Okay, so you can see here if I just got an overlay, you can see the the kind of controlling lines that I'm I'm working with. Pretty simple setup, but it gives it a tidy organization, and uh, you know it it looks fairly predictable, and that's usually what looks good. You know, if it looks right, then it's usually pleasing to the eye. Okay, so we'll. Uh, We'll move away from Photoshop and then we'll uh, we'll get InDesign started and set up the page and uh, get things moving. So we'll pause this just now and uh, pick up things in InDesign. Okay, we'll look uh, firstly have a look in InDesign at what the, the finished article uh, looks like and then uh, we'll start building it up ourselves. Okay, so I've got a recent recent file. Okay, hold the Alt key can zoom out there so I can see the presentation okay um, well, I'm going to show you how the how the layers build up so there's quite a few layers it's, you know, it's a relatively simple s design here but you know even that requires quite a few layers to achieve it you know breaking everything up gives us a control over the various components so if I start hiding a few of these layers you can see 
how the build up is. Now these blue lines that you can see here, these are the guides, this is the kind of thing we start with first. So I'll just I'll just quit this file and we'll we'll start fresh. Okay. So I want a new file. And in the previous video we created an A1 sheet. So we'll start with that as the basis. Okay. If you haven't got the A1 here, check the previous video and it shows you takes you through setting up a custom size and creating an A1 page. So we'll go with A1. Uh, this doesn't the margins and the lines doesn't matter with this. We're going to be working inside this whole sheet. So we'll just go with that. Uh, we don't need facing pages either because we're just doing a one single presentation. Click OK. OK, now here's layer one. Uh, it, sets, it gives you just one layer to start with. Um, I'm going to just ignore layer one and do basically nothing on layer one. I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to rename this to guides. Okay, that is now the current layer. I can hide this panel just for now because I've not got much space on the screen. Okay, and uh, firstly let's let's now create guidelines that will give us the size of an A2 inside this A1. Okay, so in InDesign you've got two cursors you work with. The first one is basically a select and place cursor, and then the one below that is for modifying the contents of placed objects. So we'll come to this later, but we'll generally for now we'll be working with the black cursor. Okay, come up to the ruler and just click and hold and drag downwards and you'll create a guideline. Okay, now it's red at the moment, okay, but once we click off that it will go cyan coloured like all guidelines are. Okay. I'll click back on that so I can get control of it and I want to tell that to go to a specific position on screen. Okay, so the first line we're going to put at 50 millimeters in the Y direction. Okay, drag out another one and we'll put this at 470. Okay, so between there 50 and 470, we've got 420 millimeters. That's the height of the A2 piece of paper. From the side, drag one out, and we'll place this one at 100. Just starting with the nice round numbers here, 50 and 100, it just makes it easier to do the maths as you place the other guidelines. So 100, press enter, and then a second vertical guideline. Okay, this one's a slightly different number. We're going to go for 695. Okay, so we've got 595 between these two lines and 420 between these. That's our A2 piece of paper inside there. Okay, we'll be putting in lots more guidelines, but we want to now make a make our crop marks for cutting this piece of paper out of the A1 later on. So we go back to the layers list and let's create a new layer and this is going to be for our crop marks. Okay. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll zoom in. I can hide that just now. <coughs> we'll zoom in in one corner because these have to be placed fairly carefully. Okay, so we'll get zoomed right in. Okay, and we're going to. Um, I'm going to tell the, the the software to work with uh, a bit less fineness. A one millimeter accuracy is going to be okay. So let's have a look at the, uh, the the preferences for the software. This will be just off the view. So if you go to edit and then very bottom of the list, you'll find preferences. Okay, and we want units and increments. Okay, so you see here we've got keyboard increments and cursor keys are set to half a millimeter, a quarter of a millimeter. Okay, we can change that to one millimeter. 
It just means that when we nudge things, they're just going to move in one millimeter increments instead of quarter of a millimeter. Okay, so we're going to draw a line. Okay, and it's saying how how thick do you want the line? We've got a, a, a stroke thickness there. Okay, stroke is applied to to lines and edges of objects. Okay, so this is like the outline. So it's going to use a stroke color of black. So that's fine. That'll be okay. And instead of points, because I don't really know how big these are, I want to use millimeters. Okay, so let's say two millimeters instead. Okay, that equates to 5.669 points. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, and we should be snapping to, to grid lines. Okay, so if you drag a line out from your guideline there, hold shift, it will go horizontally and let go. Okay, so we've got a two millimeter wide line and the length of that line at the moment is 29 millimeters. Uh, let's make it 25. It's about the same as an inch. Okay, so even though we started at that end, it's drawn it the other way. So I'm just going to move that back and it will snap into position. Okay, now I could draw another line down the woods or I could copy and rotate this one. Probably easier just to draw another one. Okay, draw it down, set its length again, 25. Okay, that one stayed at the corner this time, so that's fine. It shortened it in the other direction. So I want to use these in the other two corners, other four, three corners. So let's group these two together. So if I select, get my select tool, drag a window around those two objects. Because I went from left to right, it hasn't picked up the guidelines. I can then do object, group. Okay, so those two are together now. They're not going to be split up. And we can then get the magnifying glass, hold the Alt key, zoom out and we've got to try and copy these to the other side okay so if we control C to copy that control V we've got another set of guidelines there moving them is isn't as easy as it looks okay you've got to try and find the the right cursor and get it in position Okay, so let's move this down. Okay, now this needs either rotated or mirrored. Rotate should do. We'll just rotate it anti-clockwise and then let's place this with a bit more accuracy. Let's get in close so we, we get it in position. Okay, that looks like it's snapped maybe a wee bit off there. Let's just—is it going to snap? Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to snap for me today. There we go. Got a snap. Okay. Now, if we wanted to, we could group both of those two together again. That might help. So we click and drag. Object, group. Okay. Then instead of rotating, we could. We'll copy these first, so copy Control C, Control V, and then flip those vertical, and we can place them. We can now move them. Get the right cursor. It's always a bit tricky with this, and we've got to get in a bit closer. So we get the placement. Okay, let's get these onto the. Getting even closer. Want to make sure it looks as if it's snapped onto the onto the grid. Very fine placement here. That's right. Yes. There we go. Got it. Okay. So that's our that's our corner crop marks. So we've got something we can work to to cut this out with later on. Let's just test that they disappear if we hide the crop marks layer. That's fine, and if we hide the guides, they disappear as well. Okay, guides don't print out, but we do want the crop marks to print out so we can cut out the page later on. Okay, now so that's the, the very, very basic page setup. So I think that's a, a, a good point to, to just stop the video just there and uh, 
then we'll come back and start building up the rest of the presentation.